dearly beloved. We are gathered here in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join together Jack Lawrence Young and Sarah Margaret Widener in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God and signifying unto us the mystical union that exists between Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence in Cana of Galilee. It is therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. I require and charge of both of you, as you stand in the presence of God before whom all secrets and all hearts are disclosed, that having duly considered this holy covenant you are about to make, you do now declare before this company your pledge of faith to each other. Jack, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep only to her so long as you both shall live? Sarah, Will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep only to him so long as you both shall live? Who presents this woman to be married to this man? Her granddaddy, her mother, her sister, and I do. Amen. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Mark 10, 6-9 But the beginning of creation, God made male and female. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother, and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, whatever God has joined together, let no one separate. For the, the word of God, for the people of God. Jack, Sarah, uh, the big day is finally here. Uh, you made it. I know both of you been looking forward to this day for so long. Your moms especially, and everyone in this room has been waiting this day for about 10 and a half years. So we're glad it's here. This is going to be a great celebration. So I want you to take a big deep breath and let's have some fun. You ready? Uh, for those that don't know, uh, I've known the Young family for about 18 years. Uh, we first met at Shark Cove Cove, what a Young Life family came. And little did I know, this was the beginning of a lifelong friendship with both of our families. I was one of Jack's Young Life leaders at Love It with David Johnston. We had the opportunity to take Jack and his friends 
on various young life trails. To Shark Top Cove, to Timberwolf Lake, to Southland, to Frontier Ranch, uh, and of course, the Western Tour in 2010 to experience one of the best months um, of your life, I believe. Um, I was one of Sarah's <clears throat> and her friends in my friends as well at Holy Innocence alongside Ashley and Redden and others. I think we met in the Davis' basement, and this is where we had so many uh, Holy Innocence Young Life clubs. Uh, Sarah and I had many conversations as well uh, about going on a Western tour, but she was unable to go uh, due to some scheduling conflicts. <laughs> However, as fate had it, uh, Jack and Sarah would meet about a month later uh, after Western tour with the help of some friends at Paces Lake. They would go on their first week, a date, about a week later, to Jimmy John's <coughs> and Paces Lake, and Jack showed up, y'all, looking stunning, in his tube socks and Nike Air Max shoes. Jack nearly set the bar high, but... <coughs> um, two months later, on October 15th, Jack got the courage to ask Sarah to be his girlfriend uh, at the Widers in Brookhaven. As we all know, Paces Lake <coughs> has been a very special place in your relationship, as you met there, had your first date there, had lots of Wednesday night family dinners for 10 and a half years, so I had the privilege of being in on a few of them. Uh, had your engagement party there, and of course, you had to get engaged there. And we all know that Otis, Otis was a key player in that engagement. Uh, as Jack baited Sarah by throwing a duck to Otis, and as he did, uh, he got down on one knee, and Sarah turned around, and, and the rest is history. Um, but I don't know, today, Sarah, if you're more excited uh, to be marrying Jack, or you're more excited that Otis finally gets a mom. Um, <clears throat> Jack and Sarah, first I want to speak to the two of you as individuals. And then I want to speak to you as husband and wife. I want to start by saying what an honor and privilege it is to be standing with you here today. I do not take this privilege lightly, and it was with great joy that I have a part in marrying the two of you. Uh, I asked Zach and uh, Jack and Sarah to send me the answer to the following question. Why do you want to marry Jack? And why do you want to marry Sarah? I asked them to send the answers to this question without discussing their responses with each other. I asked if I could share their responses so we could get a little, a little better glimpse into their relationship, and I think this explains why we're all standing here today. So Sarah, why do you want to marry Jack? I want to marry Jack because he's one of the most wonderful people I know, and he makes me a better person for knowing him and having him in my life. He is so steady and genuine. You know exactly who he is when you meet him, and he isn't afraid to be exactly that who he was made to be. He loves the Lord, and I'm excited to grow closer to the Lord in our marriage together and raise a family together with him who can know and love the Lord as they get older as well. He loves others so well. He is present with them in the moment. He is such an extrovert and loves connecting with people. He sees the best in me and makes me feel so loved and seen. And he has shown me this over the past 10 years in so many ways through many highs and lows. I love how well he loves me and others. I could not be more thankful to have someone like this to go through life with. So Jack, why do you want to marry Sarah? I want to marry Sarah because she has one of the biggest hearts of anyone I know. She always puts others before herself. And she genuinely wants to love and be loved by everyone she knows. I love that I've never heard her say a bad word about anyone, ever. I want to marry Sarah because she is my best friend, and I couldn't think of a better person to share my life with. To say that uh, Jack and Sarah have fallen in love would be an understatement. But more importantly, I think it can be said they have chosen to love each other, each other unconditionally for the rest of their lives. My guess is you're drawn to each other because of some of the characteristics you saw in each other. So, I'll ask everyone in your wedding party to send me a word or phrase to best describe each of you. I'll be nice. <laughs> Especially you, Jack. Jack, of all the complimentary things the guys said about you, the most common thing said that you're kind, that you're dependable, that you're easygoing, that you're a calming presence. You're humble. You're genuine. You bring out the fun in people. You're intentional. You're a turkey lover or gobble gobble, don't said often. <laughs> But many people also say you have a great sense of humor, <clears throat> and your mom even said that you've used this humor on many occasions to diffuse potential arguments between the two of you to kind of lighten the mood. And that will probably help you in your marriage, so keep that up. <clears throat> uh, Jack, one thing, though, that stood out to me was almost every one of your groomsmen and family members described you as loyal. And this is probably why you have so many friends staying up here with you today 
and Sarah, you'll be the beneficiary of that trait for a long, long time. Sarah, some of your best girlfriends and family said many wonderful things about you, which is a testament to who you are in Christ. They said you are kind and selfless and thoughtful and positive, uh, that you're spiritual, that you're sunny, that you're a beam of light, that you have a joy of life. She sees people, and almost everyone said, you're extremely patient, and I wonder why. Uh, your mom said you were elegant, and a Kate Middleton wannabe, and both your dad and your sister described you as beautiful inside and out. Also, ask your wedding party to describe your relationship with each other, because their responses say so much about who you are as a couple and the impact that you have on others. They describe your relationship to be playful, based on trust, loyal, authentic, compatible, a dynamic duo, soulmates, family and friend focused. I love that one. And so many mention how your love for your dog Otis can't be beat. But what stood out to me most was how many of your closest friends just said that y'all are best friends. That y'all bring out the best in each other. And I agree, and I believe that y'all are better together. Nicole sums y'all up well when she said, about damn time. And I think all of us feel this way. All of us have been so excited for this day for a long, long time. I think everyone in this room would say this if God created the two of you to share your lives together. We're reminded in God's word that the love the two of you share is a gift from God. Love is from God, and the relationship you share is a reflection of that love. Marriage to us, <clears throat> marriage is a picture to us of Christ's love for his church. In Ephesians 5, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. In just a moment, when the two of you take your vows, <clears throat> you're committing to love each other as Christ loves us. You're committing to put their interests ahead of your own. Essentially, you're going to die to self. Just as Jesus Christ gave himself up for the church, you will be giving yourselves up for one another. For example, Jack, this might mean that some nights, instead of watching the office reruns, the outdoor network, um, <laughs> streaming turkey hunting videos, or walking around the house all night long doing turkey calls, uh, you might find yourself watching The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, the Bachelor in Paradise, or some other early show. This might seem like a silly example to those not married, but it's a subtle way um, to deny yourself and serve your spouse. So how do you have a healthy marriage? I've been married for almost 12 years, but there are so many things I can say. Um, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to one thing. What's the one thing? It's pretty simple. The one thing is your relationship with Christ should come before your relationship with each other. The greatest thing you can do to show each other how much you love one another is to focus on your relationship with Jesus. We're reminded in Matthew 22, 37 and 39, when Jesus says, love Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So if you do this, not only will your relationship be healthy, but God will use you as individuals and a couple to minister to those around you. As a couple committed to following Christ, you're not here to fit in, but you were called to stand out and to be different. In Acts 4.13, Paul tells us that the crowd saw the courage of Peter and John, and they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. I believe we are a mere reflection of our time with Jesus. Uh, keep spending time with Jesus and you will be different. God urges us to be that seal in the hell, that light in the world, so others may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Almost done. So and, uh, how do you do this? Think about a flashlight, a little example. In order for a flashlight to work, it has to have the right kind of batteries. If a flashlight has the right kind of batteries inside, it will be able to light the way into the darkness. However, if you try to put something else or the wrong kind of batteries in the flashlight, it will not work. In the same way, each of you has been created in a relationship with our maker. And if you put anything else in your hearts other than Jesus, you will not work properly, and you will not be able to be a light which God calls you to be. However, if you put Jesus first in your marriage, and let the Holy Spirit lead you, then you will bear much fruit. It is as if you're about to run a race together, and this race is not a hundred yard dash. It's more like a marathon. And there will be days and times in your marriage 
when you let each other down, when you fall short of each other's expectations, or maybe some days you're just not feeling it. But remember, love is not an emotional feeling, just an emotional feeling. But love is a daily choice and a daily commitment. I like to think of love uh, more as a verb that takes action. Bob Goff says the best in his book, Love Does, when he says, love is never stationary. In the end, love doesn't just keep thinking about it or keep planning for it. Simply put, love does. We're reminding God's word that true love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So in closing, I have some great news for you today. You do not have to go into this marriage thing all alone. So I have a little surprise for you. Um, I want you to turn and face the crowd until I tell you to come back around. For just a moment, I want you to look out at the crowd and soak in the support you have behind you. Everyone is here today because they love you and care about you. Look at your parents. You have two great examples of parents who've been married for 30 and 31 years respectively. They've, they've provided a great model of what it looks like to commit their lives to one another. They love you and they have your back as well. Soak it in. Jack and Sarah, you are not alone. Take each other's hands. Jack, if you'll repeat after me. I, Jack, I, Jack, take you, Sarah, take you, Sarah, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And there too. And there too. I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. Now, Sarah, if you'll repeat after me. I, Sarah. I, Sarah. Take you, Jack. Take you, Jack. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for richer, poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, death us do part, according to God's holy ordinance, according to God's holy ordinance, and there too, and there too, I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my the wedding ring is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace signifying to all and unifying this man and woman in holy matrimony. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, let us pray. Bless the Lord the giving of these rings that they who wear them may abide in thy peace and continue in thy favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. All right, Jack, if you'll take Sarah's ring and repeat after me. In token and pledge, in token and pledge of our constant faith, our constant faith and, abiding love, and abiding love with this ring, with this ring I, thee wed, I thee wed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father and, of the Son, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Sarah, repeat after me. In token and pledge, token and pledge of our constant faith, and, our constant faith and, abiding love, and abiding love, with this ring, with this ring I, thee wed, I thee wed, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and, the Son and, of the Holy Spirit. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For as much as Jack and Sarah have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and thereto have pledged their faith to each other and declared the same by joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God have joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen.
almost over. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of us all, giver of all spiritual grace, the author of everlasting life, send thy blessing upon Jack and Sarah, whom we bless in thy name, that they may surely keep the vow and covenant between them, and they may ever remain in perfect love and peace together. Look graciously upon them that they may love, honor, and cherish each other, and so live together in the faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and a place of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You can turn and face each other. And now may God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord graciously look upon you with favor, and so fill you with all spiritual benediction and love that you may so live together in this life that in, and in the world to come you may have everlasting life. Amen. Family and friends, it is my honor and joy to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jack Lawrence Young. Jack, you may kiss your bride. Thank you.